Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to spend a little bit of time with our screen used kit. You know, after I came back from RetroCon a couple weeks ago, I realized I've had this list of to-do items, maintenance, upgrades, whatever, on this car for like years. But I've been so busy with other projects, you know, like the semi, that um, I've just kind of been neglecting the car a little bit, unfortunately been in storage really for a couple years prior to uh, this event and one before it this year. But anyways, um, so I decided let's spend a little time and get this, uh, get some of the things checked off the list. I mean, my list is like, I've got like 30 things on this list. So if we can at least get a couple things checked off, it'll make me feel better. All right, so we're going to do some upgrades to the interior panels of the car. So uh, the car actually had, it has its original panels. They were carpeted uh, after the show ended. They shouldn't be carpeted. So we're gonna clean those up, repaint them. They're gonna look amazing. And then um, we're also going to do some wire routing uh, for our power supply that we have in the car for car shows and things like that. And then we're gonna pull the car out here in a minute and drop the skid plate. We're actually gonna pull the skid plate out and climb under there and see if we can figure out where our transmission leak is coming from because I really want to get that fixed. I am really tired of just puddles of transmission fluid underneath the car wherever I park it. So we're going to do that as well. Um, and uh, that might be enough for today, but you never know what else we'll get into. All right, let's get going. Hey guys, so we're doing some work on our original kit, kind of like we talked about in our last video. Um, we have a long list of things that we want to address with the car, but we decided to start with um, redoing the interior panels. So for those of you who aren't, uh, who didn't see the last video, the interior panels on the car were like spray bombed back in the Night Rider days. Um, a couple of them were, were true tan panels, some were black, some were uh, light gray and the crew, they didn't care. They would just literally spray bomb the interior with a tan paint. Well, when we got the car, what, uh, 12, 14 years ago, 14 years ago. Wow. When we got the car 14 years ago, um, the panels, they were all chipped and they were in terrible shape. So we re repainted them at the time, but we repainted them in a slightly incorrect shade of tan and it was a little too shiny and we carpeted the panels because the panels that were in here had this really dark brown carpeting on them. So we thought, well, there was carpeting on them, you know, so we're gonna put carpeting back on. Well, in the last 14 years, we've uncovered evidence that no, the panels were actually were not carpeted on the show. They were carpeted after the show by the studio when it went on display. So um, in an effort to continue to work to put this car back to it, it's always going to be a hybrid between how it looked when it was on the show and how it looked when it was on display at the studio in the theme park. But um, we decided to to clean up the panels. The carpeting we had put on so many years ago had started to um, wrinkle and was peeling up. It just wasn't looking good. So um, we took this opportunity. We pulled the carpeting off. We're redoing the panels. And um, we got a couple of the panels done. But before I put them back in, I want to show you um, the car behind the panel. There's a couple interesting, little interesting tidbits you might find um, that I wanted to show you before we kind of cover all this back up again. All right, let me show you. All right, so this is the panel that we've been working on. That one back there we cleaned up already and I showed you in the last video. So what can you see here, right? So there's a couple things. Let me turn a light on, maybe that'll help, yeah. So first of all, obviously, you notice it was red. We've talked about this. The car was actually red from the factory. And, but what's interesting to note is, and um, you can kind of see it here. Um, do you see how this is getting darker as we go up, right? It's, it's red, real red down here. And, um, you know, especially in here. But you see all of this, you see how it has an overspray to it? This is um, black overspray because 
I think what happened is whenever they initially painted the car black for the show back in 1984, they probably gutted it and sprayed it, you know, sprayed the car black and didn't worry about masking anything off in here. Um, and that's what you see here. This is all black overspray from the very first Knight Rider paint job it got. And if the headliner wasn't in here, you'd actually see the roof part is almost completely black. So um, that's, you know, that's kind of neat to see, but because the panels, you know, they were, they would have been this color red and, um, you know, most of them are now this darker, you know, this overspray here. And that's why that's history. That's part of the original black paint job right there. All right. So this is the trunk pool cable with the handle removed right here. So it's just, um, you know, it's held in place right here. It's screwed into the body and then um, you just have this cable. This was, we found this in the car. Um, it was hidden behind the panel and the panel did have a cutout in it, which we'll show you here in a minute. But because of that ugly, that brown carpet, the ugly brown carpet they covered it with, they didn't have, they didn't cut the hole in. So we didn't know the original panel and the original hole was there until we removed the carpet. But this was behind it. So we simply reinstalled it. Um, okay, and then the other thing I wanted to show you, oh, if I can get up, is just a minor thing, but still interesting nonetheless. So um, this piece right here, this is the mount for this roll shade, Trans Am roll shade, right? So there's a mount there and there's one on the other side. What's interesting to note, and honestly, I never noticed this the first go around, whenever I did the initial uh, preservation effort on the car, but um, this car did not come with the mounts for the roll shade from the factory. These were added in. Normally these are tack welded into the uh, car. Let me get you some light there. But you can see these ones are screwed in, right? So what they did was they simply took um, these probably out of one of the train wreck cars and screwed them in place so this car could have a roll shade. So originally from the factory, did not have a roll shade. And this bundle of wiring you see here, zip tied, this colorful bundle right there, that's all left over from its tour car days. Um, it's part of the wiring to control the dash, the windows, the headlights. It's all deactivated now, it doesn't work because we, when we put the car back together, we reinstated the original window switches, the original headlight switch and all that stuff because they really cannibalize the factory's the, the factory wiring in order to make all this stuff work remotely when it was on display at the studio. So we reverted all that back because it's not going to be a static display anymore. And but we left all the wiring in there just for historical purposes. All right. So now that you've seen all of that, let me show you um, what we've done with the panels so far. All right, so we were just talking about uh, the carpeted panels and how I removed them. So I was working on the panel that actually has the cutout for the trunk pull release. And just to give you an idea, this is what the panel looked like um, when I first removed it from the car a few days ago in order to start prepping it. So you can see that it has, you know, it has my uh, slightly too shiny, slightly too brown paint job on it um, with the carpet on it, all right? So then this photo is after I pulled the carpet off and you can see all of the residue under there. Um, quite a job to clean that up. But I use Goo Gone, I use scrapers, a whole bunch of stuff, and um, we were able to get it uh, all cleaned up. So um, let me debut to you the finished, the refinished panel here, right? So there we go. So it's all cleaned up. It's been resprayed now in the correct, 100% correct tan color, which is really neat. And one thing that I wanted to point out is, is the trunk pool hole. Look how rough it is, right? They didn't care. No one was going to be able to see this this close. So they literally just got in here with a, a Dremel or a saw and just rough cut this thing out. There's burrs everywhere. I mean, it's it's rough, but of course, you know, we're going to leave it that way. That's history, right? So we're going to be able to have the trunk pool cable there, the original panel, the original hole, everything. Um, and just to give you an idea, this panel you can see here was actually black. It's one of the charcoal panels from the factory. So not a true tan panel, original from the show. We also 
uh, went ahead and we're basically doing this one side of the car at the time at a time. So this is all the passenger side stuff. So we redid this panel in the correct color. And again, you can see this one was originally charcoal as well. And then um, we did the roof panel between the uh, T-tops and the trunk here. And this panel um, looks to be the, maybe the sandstone, which is very interesting because this car came with sandstone interior. So this very well could be the factory panel for this car, I don't know. But one other thing I wanted to point out, take a look right here. See all this black overspray in here and on this lip? Again, that's original, that's, this wasn't us. This was original black overspray from one of the many paint jobs the car had. Um, Cause again, they, you know, it's looking like they gutted the car when they initially painted it from red to black, but then, then they put the interior back together. But then anytime the car needed paint again, they weren't going to remove all this stuff. They would just keep spraying the outside of the car. So during one of those subsequent paint jobs, my guess is they got overspray here. So original, that's original kit black right there and right there, which is really neat. Um, yeah, here's the old carpet that uh, we pulled off of this panel here. And then the other thing is just, get these, just the uh, trim caps here. You can see these were, these were um, dark gray, a darker gray. And let's see what the caps were. One was sandstone and one was, looks like dark, maybe that briar brown or something. So, but now the outsides are all the painted the correct color. So you can see that the interior of this car really was a mishmash of parts from probably a bunch of different Knight Rider cars. We also have um, this panel, the kick panel for the passenger side. Now, um, we do have photographic evidence that the kick panels did have carpeting on them during the show, not this carpeting. It, in fact, um, the pictures we have show uh, tan, a tan panel and charcoal carpet here, believe it or not, which was never a combination. But if you think that, um, I don't know if it's charcoal or gray, but anyways, um, if you think, well, you know, they're probably taking the interior that was in there and spray bombing, at least to start, they probably had the factory panel in there that still had the gray carpet in, and then they just painted this stuff gray and left it alone. Um, by the time we got the car, that original gray carpet was gone. It had this dark brown carpet on there. It looked terrible and it smelled like mouse pee. So when we redid this, um, I put new carpet in and the carpet's going to stay because again, there, there is evidence there was carpet on these panels um, back when the show was on. But again, you can see this particular panel was another, looks like a dark charcoal, perhaps. There's a lot of tan overspray as you can see. So, all right, let's... Um, Let's get these installed. All right, so let's start with, um, we're gonna have to do these two panels, I think in concert here, right? So we'll start with this panel. Let's see if we can get this in. Kind of slides under here. There we go. Panels. There we go. Let's try that again. Let's see if we can get that in there. So you probably noticed there's no speaker in there. Um, by the time we got the car, there was no speakers, no speaker wiring, nothing. And, um, you know, we're not, you know, planning to put any audio system in the car. So it will stay that way. All right, let's get the pull handle put back on here. Excellent. All right, so what else do we need to do? Need to get the speaker cover back on. So let's do that. And the coat hook. Now this coat hook, you'll notice, is not 
a factory looking coat hook, right? Well, it's the coat hook that was in the car when we got the car. And it was the coat hook that was in the car when it was on display at Universal. So that's the one that's going back in. So we put that on and then it's got this little rubber boot and voila, we got the coat, coat um, hook back on. All right, so what else? Let's get the, this piece back on, if we can. So it's interesting, this car, again, has been crashed and bashed so much that this, this uh, hook here that's supposed to hook on, you know, the, the rear seat when it folds up, this is the rod that the latch engages to kind of hold the back seat up. The car is so, was bashed and crashed, so it actually doesn't even line up with this hook anymore. So don't know why I'm putting it on, but. All right, um, and then let's get the receiver for the uh, roll shade, put back in. And screwdriver. That back on. All right, let's get our plastic screws back in. One and two. Grab our screwdriver here. Those tightened, not too tight. I've broken many of these over the years. There we go. All right, let's see how that looks. Much better, much cleaner, and much more series accurate. That's the way that is supposed to be. Love it. No rear seat belts, as you can see, they were pulled long, long ago. All right, part two. We got the driver's side panels out, so we'll show you what that looks like. Again, this is the first time these panels have been out since uh, 2012. But um, you can see here, the that's original black overspray right there when they were painting the car. And as you guys probably know from watching the channel, and obviously it was red, but uh, yeah, we got all this pulled out. Once again, you got the black up here, the overspray from whenever they were painting the car originally, but you can see it's still red down here. So let me show you. So these are the next parts to be refurbished. All right. So again, um, I repainted these back in 2012. Slightly wrong color, wrong sheen. Carpet, we've later learned, actually should not even be on here at all. We're going to strip that off. But um, this panel, as you can see, was originally uh, gray, like a charcoal. The other ones were dark, like a dark charcoal. This is a lighter one. And um, something interesting, whenever they carpeted it for use at the studio, they, didn't, they just carpeted over the door, as you can see there. So when we get this all cleaned up and removed, we're actually going to have the functionality of that door there again. We can put stuff in there. This panel is cracked, as you can see, but um, we're gonna repair that so it's not cracked. And then we've got the kick panel, which is a factory tan piece, and this one, which is also factory tan. So you can see all these panels, like I said, came from multiple different cars. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this carpet off just so you can kind of see what we're working with under here and what needs cleaned up. Oh, isn't that lovely? There we go. Lots of glue residue. You can see they even had the door taped shut. 
at one point all gonna get cleaned up and restored. It's gonna look so good when we're done with this. All right guys, so I wanted to share with you the final result. As you can see, the panels have all been redone in the correct tan color. Let's walk around here, kind of give you a better look. So if you remember, these were all covered in carpet and um, they shouldn't have been covered in carpet. Universe Studios put car carpet on them after the show ended and it was this ugly brown carpet. When we got the car, um, we refinished them and put new carpet on. Carpet was bubbling after 12 years and it shouldn't have had carpet to begin with. So I got the panels all cleaned, all scrubbed, um, and then re-dyed and they look not brand new. Um, because there are scuffs and other things, imperfections, gouges in the plastic, but that's from its use, right? We didn't want to cover that up, but we did get it all repainted. You can see this panel was originally gray. We left the, we left the underside exactly as it was, but um, still have to put a lock in there. But it looks so, so much better, so much cleaner. Um, and then the other thing we did, so the car has a power supply as we talked about, so we can plug it into an outlet and let the scanner and the dash run all day with no concern. But the cord was up in the front. We always had to run wires back, you know, run an extension cord. It was not the nicest situation because we didn't want people tripping over. We had to tape the wire down. So when I had these panels out, I actually ran a, a uh, power cable all the way back here, down right to here. So um, there was actually, there was a hole cut out here already from its time at the theme park. That's, this is where all the cables would come out. So I decided to use that hole and um, put this door in. So take a look at this, this is really cool. So there's this locking pin, you pull it out and you open this and then voila, there's our power that we can plug the car in. And when we're done, we can just tuck it up like this, put our pin in pretty neat huh and like i said that hole was already there i would never cut off a fresh hole in the car just for that but um, this panel actually fit this hole almost perfectly so it was like it was meant to be so now whenever we have to plug the car in we take that out plug it in right there and we are good to go pretty cool huh we've got a new feature across the night rider historians youtube channel super thanks not to be confused with super pursuit with Super Thanks, you have the option to post a distinct, colorful, and fully customizable comment in our video's comments section. This shows the world that you are a super Knight Rider fan and will stand out amongst the sea of comments that we receive. Go ahead, give it a try. And every Super Thanks gets a super response from us. Press the Thanks button. Just don't press the Turbo Boost. Okay, so as you can see, we've got Kit up in the air on our uh, little stands there. And let's bring you underneath here so you can see um, kind of what we're gonna be doing. 
<clears throat> All right, so um, this is the skid plate, obviously, and you can see it covers the uh, engine and the transmission. Um, this skid plate is not original. This is an exact recreation of what would have been on here. In fact, it's so exact, we we actually um, took a template of one of, of our other car, which has its original skid plate. And um, then we duplicated this exactly. But the mounts for the skid plate here, here, and two in the back are original. Um, so this bar here you can see was welded in and it's actually integrated in with the camera tow bar receivers right here. Um, this is all original, this is not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt the skid plate and slide it out of here. That way we can get a better look at um, where the transmission leak is coming from. And also, um, probably not gonna do it in this video, but we do need to do an oil change. And while there is an access hole in the skid plate to drain the oil, it's gonna be much easier to do it with this out of here. So, um, now, I don't know if you can tell, but the skid plate is kind of curved. Um, there is a little bit of tension on this plate, so I'm gonna put a jack um, in here just to keep pressure on it while I unbolt those, then I'll slowly lower the jack to allow the skid plate to uh, slide down. All right, let's get going. So we got those bolts out. Now, if I lower this, I expect to see this plate to come down at least a little bit. We'll go slow. All right. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of transmission fluid on this skid plate. So I'm gonna take it back a little bit here so I can kind of support the back end. Fortunately, it's aluminum, so it's, I mean, it's still heavy, but it's not nearly as heavy as um, steel. All right, let's get the back ones out. One, that right there, and the other one, right there. All right, skid plate should come right out. And it does. There you go. There's the skid plate. So you can see here, just all of the dirt, the transmission fluid. Um, yeah, definitely needs cleaned up. And now we need to get under there and look at uh, how bad the leak really is. All right, let's head underneath together. Here is the underside of an original Knight Rider car in all its glory. So you can see here, we just have light surface rust because it's been its whole life in California and it's been in a climate controlled setting ever since. See these yellow dots on some of these pieces? Anything that I had to replace on this car that was not original, I put a yellow dot on just so we'd always know. So obviously these bushings, the original ones were completely dry rotted, either missing or just, uh, you know, toast. So I had to replace all those. Those are the original, well, original to the show, orange Coney shocks. 
you see them all the time in the show. Um, oil pan is a replacement pan. The original one that was in here had a giant gash in it, so I had to uh, replace that. All right. Let's see here. Does everything else look... I actually haven't been under here to look at anything in, well, 10 years. So you can see all around the transmission how wet it is. These transmission lines right here. So there's an interesting story about them. Um, well, kind of interesting. So um, when we got the car, the transmission lines were cut because the transmission was actually out of the car. That is the original one to the show. We were able to get it, but the transmission had been pulled and the lines had been cut. So whenever I was putting this back together, I didn't have any uh, original GM transmission lines. So I ended up, um, I did have some, some other generic purpose lines. And uh, I put them in and they ended up being slightly too long. I didn't have the tools to flare and to, to shorten them. So I put them in here and I bent them and they're not the prettiest, but it was only meant to be temporary. Well, here we are over a decade later and I never changed them. So one of the things we're gonna be doing is taking these out and putting original GM lines in here. So that cleans that up a little bit, but um, yeah, I got to change the oil. Yeah, I think we got to pull that cover off and see if that's where our leak is or if it's the pan gasket. Yeah, we're going to dig in and see what we can figure out here. All right, so it's a little tight under here, as you can imagine, but I did get the flywheel cover off here so I can really see what's happening. And there was some, let's see if I can reach it. So there is a little bit of uh, junk in the uh, flywheel cover, not a ton, but a little bit. So then I started looking in here and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm definitely not an expert, but it does look dry up in here, right? And wouldn't that be the front pump seal? If the front pump seal was leaking, I would imagine this side of the torque converter and even the housing of the transmission would be wet up in here, right? With transmission fluid. I don't see that. What I do see is a lot of um, transmission fluid wetness right over here. I'm wondering if it's this gasket. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think it's this gasket? And I remember at the time I, uh, I put a gasket in here and I put this gasket sealer on here. But in retrospect, coming at it 10 years later, I'm wondering if I should not have put the gasket sealer on there and I'm wondering if that's the problem. What do you guys think? Can you guys let me know? This is a turbo 350 transmission. All right. Um, this is the original pan. We want to keep the original pan. It actually doesn't look warped at all around here. So what do you guys think? Um, based on what you see here, how it's dry in here. And I don't know if I can show you. So the uh, dipstick tube is up here. I don't think it's leaking. Where is it? Right up in here. I don't think it's leaking from the dipstick tube gasket. I really don't. It doesn't seem like it is. It seems like it's leaking from the pan gasket, which I hope it is because that's probably the easiest fix of them all, right? Um, and it doesn't leak right away. It leaks after the transmission's been sitting a while, which I would think after the transmission's been sitting a while, the fluid fills back up in the pan, right? And it would potentially spill out from um, where this gasket is. So can you guys let me know, um, you, you experts um, in just transmissions in general, do you think this is the pan gasket causing all this leakage? If so, um, do you think I should just put, either just put a gasket in here and should it be rubber or cork or synthetic or what? Should I put any of the sealer in or should I not do a gasket and just do sealer? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think because I'd love to get this cleaned up, dried up so we don't have any more um, transmission leaks. That would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, while we're under here, what else can I show you? So these are the custom made 
rear skid plate mounts. These were Universal Studios. They made those. There's one there, one right back here. Um, if we look here, you see all these pools in the metal here. This is where the studio, whenever it was up on a car carrier, they would hook the chains in here. And you can see over time from hooking it up so many times, they started pulling on the metal right there and to a lesser extent right here. Um, for those of you guys, whenever this car was on display at the studio, we talked about the P seats, right? And how they had to drill floor, drill holes for drainage. There are some of those holes right there. I don't think I've ever shown anyone those. Um, there's a few holes there. There's more on, uh, let's see, there's some right here too, and there's some up in here. Um, let's see what else I can show you. So while we're having fun under the car, uh, what else can we find? There's some more tears in the sheet metal here from when they would, either when they hook the car onto the car carrier or some stunt, I don't know. Um, let's see. Otherwise, the floorboards are in pretty good shape on this side. I believe if we go to the other side, we'll see some gouges in the sheet metal. Let's do that. Yeah, so if we come over here, this is the rear seat floor pan. It's got a huge, huge dent in it right there. Um, if we look right here, we've got a giant gash from probably from a stunt right there in the floorboard. There's more uh, holes, PC, P holes, PC holes. Um, catalytic converters were removed from most of the cars and they just put a straight pipe in. That's all the original exhaust. What else? Other than that, it's mostly a factory transient. There is some additional welds and bracing, a little bit, to strengthen the unibody, but uh, on this car, not too, too much, just a little bit. All right, guys, so that's uh, it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna do some more work on this car. Let me know about the transmission and uh, what you think regarding the leak. Again, please, let's hope it's just the pan gasket. It'd be so much easier to fix. Uh, we'll get the skid plate cleaned up after we get the leak fixed, get the oil changed, and it should be ready to go for another decade or so. But um, like I said, still lots of stuff on our list that we wanna address on this car. So maybe we'll turn this into a series of videos, but um, yeah, it's, it's nice to work on the car again. It's been so long, so. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, like and subscribe, share with your friends. They'll be envious of you. And uh, tell them Night Rider Historians is where it's at. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.